welcome to our class for fundamentals of accountancy, business and management one. So this is your module one or week one topic. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to define accounting, describe the nature of accounting, narrate the history or the origin of accounting, define external users and give examples, and also to define internal users and give examples also. The different definitions of accounting. First, accounting is a service activity. So its function is to provide quantitative information, primarily financial in nature, about economic entities that is intended to be useful in making economic decisions. Also, it is an information system that measures processes and communicates financial information about an economic entity. It is also defined as a process of identifying, measuring, and communicating economic information to permit informed judgments and decisions by users of the information that is based on the AAA or the American Accounting Association. Accounting is commonly called the language of business. So wherein it delivers financial information to different users of financial statements. So along this slide, you will know who are the users of the financial statement. Next, it is also defined based on the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. So this is AICPA. It is an art of recording, classifying, and summarizing in a significant manner and in terms of money transaction and events which are in part of at least a financial character and interpreting the results thereof. So this definition, all of this definition will provide a better understanding of accounting in terms of the following. So you have um, considered an art of the science, um, involved in inter interconnected phases, concerned with transactions and events, financial having financial in character. So in accounting, business transactions are expressed in terms of money and accounting interprets the results of the financial statement. So based on the definition of accounting, we can derive the following basic features of accounting or the nature of accounting. First, it is a service activity. So um, accounting provides assistance to decision makers by providing them financial reports that will guide them in coming up with sound decisions. Accounting is also a process. Why? Because process refers to the method of performing any specific job step by step according to the objectives or targets. So accounting is identified as a process as, as it performs the specific task of collecting, processing, and communicating financial information. So in doing so, it follows some definite steps like the collection, recording, classification, summarization, finalization, and reporting of financial data. Also, accounting is both an art and discipline. So it is the art of recording, classifying, summarizing, and financial data. Right, so the word art here, the word art refers to the way something is performed. So it is behavioral knowledge involving a certain activity or creativity and skill to help us attain some specific objective. Accounting is a systematic method consisting of definite techniques and its proper application requires skills and expertise. So by nature, accounting is an art and because it follows certain standards and professional ethics it is also a discipline
so for the history of accounting. So accounting is as old as civilization itself. So it has evolved in response to various social and economic needs of men. Accounting started as simple recording or repetitive exchanges. So the history of accounting is often seen as indistinguishable from the history of finance and business. So following is the evolution of accounting. So first, we have here the cradle of civilization. So around 3600 BC, record keeping was already common from Mesopotamia, China, and India to Central and South America. So the oldest evidence of this practice was the, um, what we call this, the clay tablet. Okay, so the clay tablet of Mesopotamia, which dealt with commercial transactions at the time as listing or, or listing of accounts receivable and accounts payable. Then followed by the 14th century, the double entry bookkeeping, which we are following right now. So 14th, uh, the double entry bookkeeping. So the most important event in accounting history is generally considered to be the dissemination of double entry bookkeeping by Luca Pacioli. So Luca Pacioli is considered as the father of accounting in 14th century, where in Italy. So Pacioli was um, revered in his day and was a friend and contemporary of Leonardo da Vinci. So Leonardo da Vinci is very famous. The Italians of the 14th to 16th centuries are widely acknowledged as the fathers of modern accounting and where the first to commonly use Arabic numerals rather than Roman. So for tracking business accounts, um, Luca Pacioli wrote Roma di Aritmetica. Okay, so that, that was the first book published that contained a detailed chapter on the double entry bookkeeping. So this is very important, the double entry bookkeeping. Next is the French Revolution. Uh, um, around 1700. So the thorough study of accounting and development of accounting theory began during this period. So social upheavals affecting government, finances, laws, customs, and business had greatly influenced the development of accounting. Then you have here the Industrial Revolution. So this is from 1760 to 1830. So mass production and the great importance of fixed assets so we're given attention during this period. Then the 19th century, so the beginnings of modern accounting in Europe and America. So the modern, the formal accounting profession emerged in Scotland in 1854. So when Queen Victoria granted a royal charter to the Institute of Accountants in Glasgow, so creating the profession of the Chartered Accountant or the CA. So in the late 1800s, um, Chartered accountants from Scotland and became came to the U.S. to audit British investments. So some of these accountants stayed in the U.S., setting up accounting practices and becoming the origins of several U.S. accounting firms. So the first National U.S. Accounting Society was set up in 1887. So the American Association of Public Accountants was the forerunner to the current, the AICPA or the, what we call the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. So in this period, rapid changes in accounting practice and reports were made, and accounting standards to be observed by accounting professionals were promulgated. So notable practices such as mergers, acquisitions, and growth of multinational corporations were developed, and a merger is when one company takes over all of the operations or another business entity resulting in the dissolution of another business. So business is funded by acquiring another company. So these types of transactions have challenged accounting professionals to develop new standards that will address accounting issues related to this business combination. So and of course, the present we have the, the development of modern accounting standards in commerce. So the accounting profession in the 20th century developed around state requirements for financial statement audit. So beyond the industry's self-regulation, 
the government also sets a funding standard so through what through law and agencies such as the Securities and Exchange Commission or what we call the SEC. As economies worldwide continue to globalize, accounting regulatory bodies required accounting practitioners to observe international accounting standards. So this is to assure transparency and reliability and to obtain greater confidence on accounting information used by the global investors. So now a day, Investors um, seek investment opportunities all over the world so to remain competitive. Businesses everywhere feel the need to operate globally. So the trend now for accounting professionals is to observe one, one single set of global accounting standards in order to have greater transparency and comparability of financial data across borders, so around global, okay? Who are the users of accounting information? So who uses accounting data? So there are two broad categories of users financial information. We have here internal users and external users. So internal users of accounting information are those individuals inside a company who plan, organize, and run the business. So these users are directly involved in managing and operating the business. So this includes um, marketing managers, production supervisors, finance directors, company officers, and of course, the owners. So what information will user need that can be answered by the accounting? So these internal users, or what we call the primary users of account information, include the following management, employees, and owners. So for management, the information needed are those income or earnings for the period, those sales, available cash, production costs, and the decisions to be supported is to analyze the organization's performance and position and take appropriate measures to improve the company results, sufficiency of cash to pay dividends to stockholders, and pricing decisions. For employees, so the information needed is the profit for the period, salaries paid to employees, and the decisions to be supported is the job security, um, to consider staying in the employee of the company or look for other employment opportunities. So that's what the employees need, why they need the um, account information. Also, for the owner, um, the owner needs information for profit or income for the period, so resources or assets of the business, liabilities of the business. So for the decisions to be supported, so this is a consideration for the owners regarding additional investment, expanding the business, borrowing funds to support any expansion plan. So accounting information is presented to the internal users, so to the management, employees, owners, usually in the form of management accounts, budget, forecast, and financial statements. So this information will support whatever decision of the internal users. And for the external users, so these are individuals and organizations outside the company who want financial information about the company. So these users are not directly involved in managing and operating the business, unlike the internal users. So the two most common types of internal users are potential investors and creditors. So Potential investors use account information to make decisions to buy shares of a company. And creditors, here, the creditors, such as suppliers and bankers, use accounting information to evaluate the risk of granting credit or lending the money. So also included as external users are government regulatory authorities so such as SEC or the Security and Exchange Commission, the BIR or the Bureau of Internal Revenue, the Department of Labor and Employment or the DOLE, the SSS, the Social Security System, and the LGUs or the Local Government Unit. So external users here, external users of account information include um, the following here, the creditors, 
So creditors for again for determining the credit worthiness of an organization. So terms of credit are set by creditors according to the assessment of their customers' financial health. So creditors include suppliers as well as lenders of finance such as banks. Also for the tax authority, so we have their BIR. So for determining the credibility of the tax returns filed on behalf of the company. Again, also the investor. So investors is one of the two most common types of general users. So this is for analyzing the feasibility of investing in a company. So investors want to make sure they can earn a reasonable return on their investment before they commit any financial resource to the company. Also, customers is for assessing the financial position of the suppliers, which is necessary for them to maintain a stable source of supply in the long term so this are, or about business and also the regulatory authorities and what I have said, you have their SEC, the Dolly. So this is for ensuring that a company's disclosure of accounting information is in accordance with the rules and regulations set in order to protect the interests of the stakeholders who um, rely on such information informing their decisions. So our last slide is the types of information needed by each group of users. So accounting information includes both financial or quantitative and non-financial or qualitative information used by the decision makers. So first, for the qualitative analysis, so it means looking at the intangible. And for quantitative, and the word quantitative, so it means looking at the actual numbers. And for comprehensive analysis, it should include both the qualitative and quantitative analysis or factors that would impact the decision later. So that's all for your week one topic. So you wait for our topic for your week, week two. So the last topic for this um, week is the types of information needed by each group of users. So accounting information includes both financial or quantitative and non-financial or qualitative information used by the decision maker. So qualitative analysis means looking at the intangible. Quantitative from the word quanti means looking at the actual numbers. And of course, comprehensive analysis, it should include looking at the both qualitative and quantitative factors that would impact decision makers. So, um, these are all topics or the competencies you need to um, cover or acquire for your week one topic for sub and one. So you wait for our next video for the week two topic.